In this chapter, we'll talk about the fluid and the electrolytes, and we'll talk also about how our body maintains its pH. The first thing we need to understand is how much water in our body and the amount of water or the water content in our body will change as we you know change in age or as we get old so in infants for example it's around 75 percent of the body mass but as we get older we are going to lose that amount of water so in elderly people to around 45 percent in of the uh, body mass is uh, is water where is this water we will see it later where uh, our body holding the water but see those percentages is how much water in each of those organs okay see for example like in the blood 50 percent in the liver 70 to 75 percent of the liver mass is water and so on in the lungs 75 to 80 percent and so on so though the water in our our body in in general it's either inside the cell or outside the cell so the water is either intracellular either intracellular fluid or extracellular fluid what does it mean intracellular it means it's inside the cell inside cells extracellular outside the cells so for this that's that's kind of for us at least in the course that's kind of done deal we are not going to study this we will focus more on the extracellular fluid this extracellular fluid where is it outside the cell it's in technically two big places either it's in the plasma okay or it's between the cells we'll call it interstitial interstitial fluid or in other places or other fluids so in the plasma if you remember we said the plasma is 90 percent 95 percent 93 percent of the plasma not the blood the plasma is water interstitial fluid is between the cells so the cells between them there is water other fluid if you remember the cerebrospinal fluid right if you remember the synovial fluid in the uh, synovial joints if you remember uh, the cavities the serosa cavities in general the pleura the uh, peritoneum for example those those cavities will have water okay but the bulk of it is in the interstitial fluid and in the plasma so this is the drawing of where is this water ice either it's inside the cell or outside the cells this is the interstitial fluid and then we have the plasma okay for this water whether it's inside the cell or outside the cell of course it contains electrolytes and those electrolytes are not equal in their distribution so outside the cells we will have mainly sodium we have mainly chloride and biocarbonate all of those outside the cells inside the cells it will be mainly potassium calcium magnesium okay it's po4 ion the monohydrogen phosphate ion okay all of those are inside the cells so the brown bar is for inside the cells mainly they are inside the cells. but we'll focus on is the sodium potassium the chloride and the biocarbonate those are the big ones okay so for the sodium chloride and the biocarbonate all of them are outside the cells either in the interstitial or the plasma whereas the potassium is the main one inside the, the cell now those their concentration is of course homeostatic issue uh so we need to maintain we need to maintain it and and in this chapter we will see uh some mechanisms in to maintain those ions okay for the water balance uh, of course we have water input and we have water output how we get water into our body mainly through drinks around 1500 milliliter food 750 milliliter and metabolism to, f to uh, 50 milliliter metabolism when we when we burn glucose one side of the product is water okay and the other side of the product of of course is the energy and co2 but when we burn that sugar we are producing water so this is a way to get water inside our body then how to get the water out mostly through urine 15 milliliter then we have the invisible water loss the invisible uh, respiration then sweating and feces all of those will have around 300 milliliter of water loss okay so in general we have around the same water input should equal water output through the day now how do we need that or how do we feel that we need to drink water based on the osmolarity okay sometimes we say osmolarity sometimes osmolality really it's not really a big difference for us uh, osmolarity or osmolarity is the you know concentration of solutes to the volume of the solvent so if we have a cup of water 
how much electrolytes I have in this cup. Okay, and there is an inverse relationship between them. So if I if I have like two cups of water, right? One is filled with water, and the other one doesn't have much water. And I drop in each one like a cube of sugar, for example. So this one would be less sweet comparing to this one. This one would be high sweet. Why? It's the same amount of solute, so different volumes of water. So what 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 I want to say is that the volume of water will play a role in the concentration of the solute. So if you have high volume of water, it means you have less solutes. If you have low volume of water, you have less solutes. And this is how the body, you know, regulates the water content. Our body technically doesn't measure directly water amount. It measures the concentration of those solutes in the in the in the body. So if the body feels that the solutes concentration is getting higher, then it understands that we have less water. If if sees that the uh, solute concentration is getting lower, then it understands that we have higher volume of water. Okay, and that is the hydration. The hydration is a reflection of of this relationship between the solutes and the solvent, or between the solutes concentration and the amount of of water we have in our body. So dehydration when we have less water, and therefore we will have higher concentration of solutes. And that usually, in the case of dehydration, that will activate the hypothalamus. We have the thirst center, and that will you know, cause the person to go and drink water. So what's going to happen if we have low water amount in our body, we will have increased in blood osmolarity and we will have decrease in the blood volume. Okay. And if we have dehydration, of course, we will see increase in the osmolarity as we said earlier. And also we know this because blood, 50% of blood is around water. So if we have less water, it means we have less blood volume and less blood volume would lead to less blood pressure, right? And here the increased osmolarity directly will, will give us the dry mouth and directly would activate those more receptors in the hypothalamus which would activate the thirst center okay so those receptors will send to the thirst center that we need water there is this water in the body decreased blood uh, pressure would you know increased angiotensin 2 which also would activate the the thirst center in the hypothalamus that's when we will feel thirsty we'll go water and that would fix the issue of the osmolarity would uh, fix us also the issue of the blood pressure okay so this is how we drink water in our body how this is how to we get water into uh, our body by either one of those two mechanisms okay could be both of them at the same time could be just one of course but the main one for the water specifically is the increase in the blood osmolarity for the decrease in blood volume and the decrease of bl blood pressure, this is another mechanism. We already talked about it and we will see it again in this chapter. Now, for releasing water out of the body, urination, that is also influenced by the hydration status, how much water we have in our system. So if you don't have much water, we will have less urination. If you have too much water, we will have uh, more uh, frequent urination. And the hormone that controls this is the ADH, if you remember ADH. ADH is coming from the posterior pituitary right and what does it do it blocks your information we already know that this right so how if you remember we said adh one of its target is the kidney tubules kidney cells in the tubules in the, the in the distal convoluted tubule dct so what does it do what what does it tell them it tells them to display aquaborin which is the water channel right the water channel so those cells those in the dct or the in, in the dct or even the collecting tubule once adh is there they will but some of those aquaborins on the surface of the cell and therefore we will have more absorption of water if there is no adh then there is less of those aquaborins and therefore this water would remain in urine this is the the urine or right and then here is the plasma the blood so in case there is adh we will display more of the aquaborins and that would lead to more absorption of water and this water will go to the to the plasma we understand of course alcohol caffeine all of those would block the adh production and therefore we will not have aquaborins on the surface of the cell and therefore we will have plenty of urination okay now sometimes there there is a problem in the in the water in the interstitial uh, fluid there is accumulation of water what's happening usually is because of the blood pressure there is a fusion of water into interstitial area between the cells and this water will be taken back usually by the lymph vessels okay as the lymph now sometimes 
for various reasons there will be accumulation of water in certain areas and this is usually called edema okay edema is the accumulation of water outside the cells in between the cells and you will see the area that is you know kind of swollen and usually edema by itself there is no direct cause of it okay there is usually an underlying issue could be kidney issue could be blood pressure issue that will cause the edema so it has to be treated that issue has to be treated to get rid of uh, of the edema sometimes it's normal like in pregnancy during pregnancy some women will have edema in their feet because of the amount of the body weight and so on but that will go away after birth but sometimes it could be like a blood pressure issue or it could, uh, or it could be like hormonal issue and so on okay i will stop here in the following video we will talk about the regulation of the ions we'll talk about the sodium potassium and the calcium